Good morning. My name is Craig Immig, and I have been a part of this community for about three years. I believe compassionate inclusiveness of diverse people relates to the seven principles of Unitarian Universalism, specifically the first three, which are the inherent worth and dignity of every person, two, justice and com equity and compassion in human relations, and three, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. And I believe that this relates to the golden rules, such as mentioned in the Christian Bible, which are do to others what you would want them to do to you, and love your neighbor as yourself. If I was gay, I would not want to be mistreated because I was gay, and I would want to be free to legally marry another gay person if I chose. Today this is possible, but not long ago. Same-sex marriage was not legally recognized. The Unitarian Church of Lincoln has had a long history of welcoming and affirming same-sex relationships. In 1981, the Reverend Charles Stephen, who was the minister of the church at, at this time, that time, conducted a wedding of two men. As reported in the Lincoln Journal Star newspaper at the time, like other couples married the Unitarian Church, they prepared their own ceremony from a marriage handbook and materials supplied by Reverend Stephen. The ceremony was very sacred between the two of us, one of the men said. They say most people, either out of prejudice or ignorance, don't understand the whole concept of homosexuality. But why care about who loves me? If everyone loved one another for what they are, the world would be a lot nicer place. I am proud of the man I love, and I deserve the chance to love that person. I really like how he said that. In 1985, the organization called Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, or PFLAG, was established in Nebraska. The Unitarian Church was the only place they could find that welcomed them in so they could meet and have their events. At the time, PFLAG had already been going for about five years in other parts of the country. Barbara Kimberly was part of the national group before the, the Lincoln One began, and she was involved in it. And the first president was Jean Eileen Durgan Clinchard. B.J. Wheeler, who joined the church in 1985, and is still active with the welcoming committee, and Lois Hansen were also heavily involved in the beginning of the group. It was the first chapter of PFLAG in Nebraska. Some of the things PFLAG did was show educational videos, they had movie nights at the church and relate, that relate to same-sex issues, and they had potlucks once a month you know, with games after people had dinner. There were also support groups that were held once a month. Today, PFLAG is still going, and for more information about their current activities, their website is pflaglincoln.org, and their phone number is 402-219-3923. Start about 25 years ago, the LGBTQA plus welcoming community has put on and participated in a variety of activities. There were two votes of the congregation because there were not enough votes to get it approved the first time. They became the church sponsor of P the PFLAG meetings that were held at the church, and they were in charge of two of our worship services a year focused, that focused on sexuality and gender issues. Uh, they had coffee house, house night uh, started about 10 years ago. The original idea was that people who were coming out needed a place where they could feel safe about meeting others uh, who may have had similar experiences and they could be joined by straight people who would be accepting of them. Every year they've been involved in the Lincoln City Pride events, including having an information table there and games for kids. They also had, have had information tables at the University of Nebraska's Big Red Welcome event, and they displayed the National AIDS quilt. They um, sponsored um, the Living Better conferences in which they invited experts on various subjects to present workshops such as, uh, such as buying a house and other topics. They were awarded a grant 
to help them uh, pay for the conferences. They began in 2005 and they were held every two years. Currently, the committee maintains a comprehensive web page that is accessible from the church website. Due to the pandemic, the, the game night was moved online and people have been playing games in fun new ways with an app called Jackbox. That is after a time for socializing, of course. And some folks who join the games have learned about this, um, have learned about for through the organization called Out Nebraska. The game night happens on the fourth Friday of every month and with the next one being on March 26th. Thank you for listening and have a gay day.